this is Hara Gyoka. Welcome to Europa in Actua TV. To this episode, the economist and professor to both University of Leuven and London School of Economics, Mr. Paul de Crow, discusses with us all the consequences from the last negotiations regarding Greece's economic stability, but also provides his own viewpoints on how Greece can achieve growth. Stay tuned. <music> Mr. De Grau, welcome. Hello. Well, uh, it's really so difficult for both Greece and its European partners to uh, appoint on common economic uh, terms and have an agreement, or is more a matter of political mistrust? Yeah, I think uh, that's key. And the, the problem has become political rather than economic. Um, and what is lacking is what you say, there is uh, no trust. The creditor nations don't trust the Greek, and the Greek don't trust the creditor nations. And when there is a lack of trust, it's very difficult to come to an agreement. So basically, it is a political problem. About uh, economic terms, it might be possible and to have few economic terms that they would bring on a table an honorable deal, that it will be efficient That's for both right. sides. Yeah, I think um, when you look at the economics of this, um, one is surprised uh, that no agreement has been reached because, in a way, it would be relatively easy to do so. Um, the key is to recognize that the debt burden of Greece is too high and that one has to restructure this. One has already done some restructuring in the past, right? Some of the debt of Greece has been restructured, but probably one has to restructure it more. But that is taboo in Europe, right? The IMF would like to go in that direction, but the European countries don't want to do it. Why is that? Well, basically because they are motivated not by economic analysis, but by moralizing. It's a mora morality play, right? Uh, it is the idea that is very strong in the north of Europe that um, the Greeks have misbehaved and there is certainly part of that which is true. And therefore, they should be punished. And they should suffer. And in this kind of environment, it is, of course, very difficult to come to an agreement. And there is no willingness to go to the key of the problem, which is that the debt burden of Greece has to be reduced. What one is doing now is just prolonging the problem. That is, Greece has to make some repayments and then to the creditor nations, right? And what the creditor nations are doing is to give the money to Greece so that it can give it back to the same creditor nations. But it, the creditor nations are attaching all kinds of conditions. And some of them, I think, are really unreasonable. Like, for example, um, the fact that Greece is pushed further into austerity is unreasonable because the evidence has shown that this kind of austerity kills the economy and destroys the economy and in fact not only produces a lot of suffering for many people, common people, but does not achieve its objective, that is making sure that Greece can continue to service its debt because when the economy is shrinking, it gets more difficult for Greece to service the debt, right? And so it's, it's really a, a very bad idea. And, and, and yet the creditor nations continue to insist on that. And that makes a deal very difficult. Well, we have a lot of uh, delays. Uh, we have negotiations, negotiations, negotiations. Uh, what kind of uh, consequences and what uh, dangers are hidden uh, on that delay regarding uh, not only Greece's future, but Europe's future? Well, first on Greece, it's clear that um, this kind of approach right, uh, um, has as an effect to push Greece back into a recession. Right? Uh, it, it destabilizes the banking sector. Now there is a continuous outflow from the banking sector and such point, at some point one will have to do something, close off Greece, capital controls or what have you, to contain all this. For the rest of the Eurozone, uh, I don't think this will be felt very much um, because Greece is too, too small to affect the rest of the Eurozone. And in addition, 
I think now um, there is this perception that the European Central Bank will prevent any spillover from Greece into other countries. So that I think the, the immediate effects on the Eurozone um, will be limited. But of course, the problem with this approach is that even if tomorrow there is an agreement, this is only for a few months, because it is just like giving the money to Greece so that it can hand it over back to the creditor nations and nothing is solved. Greece is pushed further you know, on a downward slope, downward economic slope, and in six months you have to start all over again. So it's, it's a dead-end street. It's time that policymakers realize that they are, they are in a dead-end street. They better get out of the street and try to follow a different path. Syriza had uh, confirmed that from the very beginning uh, didn't had any attention to stay out of Europe, out of Eurozone. Uh, can we say in that moment that the negotiations are mm. being developed in that level? We have from the one hand Europe uh, suggesting even harder measures to Greece. Mm -hmm. So Syriza would bail a few steps back and find a solution somewhere in the middle, somewhere, of course, under austerity, but giving the impression to Greek people that Syriza tried and fight hard to achieve the honorable compromise that promised to Greek people. So in that way, we avoid further social crisis, because what is happening now in Greece uh, is uh, a huge social crisis mm -hmm. as an outcome of the economic. That, that's for sure, yeah. So I think, um, it, it's extremely difficult for, for Greece and, and, and also for the new government. What I think is that um, the Greek government should really give a strong signal that it wants to solve one of the major problems, and that is the, the lack of tax collection, the, the very bad tax organization in Greece, that allows many people not to pay taxes at all, especially the, the rich Greek, right? That's the weird thing about the tax system in Greece, that uh, people that can uh, avoid paying taxes are usually richer people that's right. than so that, common people. Yeah, I think that's, that's in fact the key problem of Greece. I don't believe that it's necessary to do much more in terms of labor market and, and, and what have you, but the key problem, I think, is is the taxation system that is um, very chaotic, but also very unfair, right? Um, and, and that has to be solved. And I, in fact, I'm a little bit disappointed with the Syriza government in that at the start, I thought that this would be their first priority and they would come out quickly with a plan to tackle this. And we are still waiting for that, right? Yes, because actually uh, that they is had, disappointing. They had made an, an, a correct analysis on on that, but there is no specific concrete plan. In yeah, yet. I think if they had gone all the way there, right, uh, and quickly and, and, and in a credible way, this would have made it easier also to convince the creditor nations that they are serious about changing things, because now. Of course, the perception exists in the creditor nations that the Greek government doesn't want to change anything, which I think is not true, but that's a perception that exists also because relatively little has been presented in terms of concrete measures and, and the big failing, I think, is in, in the tax collection system. This is a very tricky uh, circle because um, all the focus and all the efforts are going on the negotiations mm -hmm. and it's almost not uh, space and time to actually make some reforms. That's right, that's right. Okay. Uh, do you believe that uh, in that moment uh, Greece uh, is uh, a safe environment to invest? Right now I would hesitate to say yes <laughs> because there's so much uncertainty about uh, the future. I think in, in general, yes, I think Greece is a country that potentially can offer many things, right? But today, with the uncertainty, which is, is Greece going to be in the Eurozone in the foreseeable future? We don't know. Um, if there is a Brexit, what will be the implications, right? Uh, in terms of political stability, for example, many other issues will arise then. The banking system, Will the banking system implode? 
So I, f today I would certainly hesitate to invest in Greece. Once one can stabilize, and I hope one can stabilize the situation, then I think Greece has the potential to, to receive a lot of investment. And that is really the challenge that is not taken up. The creditor nation should see that, that Greece has a potential. And instead of trying to punish Greece, they should provide <coughs> um, an environment that makes it possible that Greece can start growing again and then attract investment. So instead of austerity, they should say, well, relax your budgetary policy so that you can start growing again and attract investments. And then everything clears up because when that happens, then the debt burden also declines, right? But unfortunately, it is the negative punishing approach that is continued to be used. As I can understand, you're, you're talking about how to put uh, an economic mechanism back to work. Well, you have to have cash. Mm. That's Money. right, that's right. You should, you should inject cash, you should try to promote investment and not take the negative approach, which is um, punishing people. How is possible for Greece to achieve growth in that moment? Well, for today, uh, very little. I mean, everything... Uh, in, in, in a national but, level, because we are discussing now uh, between Greece and Europe, mm -hmm. In a national level, like advices, prescriptions, I would say. Well, I think um, Greece has a, has a potential um, because it's, a, it's such an attractive country, not only for tourism, but also many other industries can, can develop in, 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 in Greece. Uh, it should be possible to develop uh, new industries, that even high-tech industries, uh, that uh, can find a place. Um, so many people would like to, to go there. But of course, it has to provide a stable environment, right? Uh, you don't want to face an uncertainty. Uh, and also, the, 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 the Greek political system has become more efficient. It's clear that the, the Greek political system is not an efficient system, right? Uh, it's not providing <coughs> governance that one would expect a modern nation uh, provides. The political system. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, it's clear. I mean, I'm, I'm not a Greek, but uh, I've been going quite often to Greece and I'm told that there is a problem there, right? Uh, there is um, not enough um, of the rule of law, right? Um, too many people try to escape mm -hmm. <coughs> the law and, and, and escape taxes and, and, and that has to be fixed, right? Uh, what is your opinion on the privatization as a, a solution to uh, find quickly an amount of money and start uh, investing that to achieve growth? Well, I think privatization in general, I'm in favor. I mean, especially if it is a way to uh, use resources in a more efficient way. Quite often we find that public authorities who run public companies are not doing that very well, right? That's an understatement. Um, and then quite often it is better to privatize. But here in the case of Greece, there is a problem of timing. Um, you don't do that. At the moment, the economy is falling it's so a deeply. It's a smoothing movement. That's right, because then you have to sell at bargain prices, right? Uh, and that then the, the, the revenue is too low. You too really low. have to sell it at, at ridiculously low prices, which will benefit not the Greek, but those who buy it, the Chinese, for example, or, or investors in the north of Europe who can get uh, valuable assets for below market prices. Yeah, we had uh, in 2013, I think it was the last example that I can recall now with the Greek organization of football prognostics. Mm -hmm. uh, we sold 33% of the organizations for uh, 7 uh, million, uh, 712 million euros, mm -hmm. which is like... Peanuts. Uh, peanuts. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's the privatization the, so, within a crisis. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I mean, so that's why I don't understand also the insistence of some of the creditor nations to go on with that. And I do understand the Greek government saying, "No, we don't want to do that." Of course, maybe there, there is a, a, a wing in the Syriza party who doesn't want to sell it in on any condition, any moment. Uh, so I would um, think that in the end it would be good for Greece to do it, but not now. I have to sincerely thank you for your time. It was a pleasure.